Jesus bless this message in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. This is your homework for the barn for Friday night, you guys. You can write the questions out if you want to. Um, but this is for you to work on throughout the week. I would make it a family project if you and your uh, Nick, I know you and your daughters and your, your wife, this would be great for you guys to sit down and do for an hour or two one night as a family unit. Bring that family really strength, strengthen in the Lord. Um, marriages, couples, whatever. Or you by yourself, y'all. Okay, take these and just dissect. When I, if I have all the scriptures up here, please read every single one of them. Don't say, well, I just read the first one. No, you got to go through. Our, I'm going to show you how the Bible confirms the Bible. And you got to jump around about the same. This is about persecution. So you can find out about persecution in one verse, but you find out so much more when you go on through. The Bible comes together like a sandwich, peanut butter and jelly. And then you'll be able to have the Bible answer a lot of your questions, the Holy Spirit. Okay, so here goes. For number one, write these down. It's Luke 21, verses 11 through 13 and 16 through 17. Acts. Chapter 7, verse 57 through chapter 8, verse 3. Acts 13, 49 through 50. Acts 26, 10 through 11. Hebrews 11, 35 through 40. Daniel Chapter 7, verses 21 through 22, and 25 through 26. And Revelation 2, 8 through 11. You're going to read these biblical passages that describe believers being persecuted for their faith. And I want you to jot down beside each one, how are they being persecuted for their faith? Then I want you to go down to number 2 and answer this question. I want you to read Mark chapter 10, 29 through 30, John 15, 20, 2 Timothy 3, 12. Your question is, should you be surprised when you also, when we are persecuted for our faith, should we be surprised? Yes or no? Okay, and why or why not? Okay, moving on down to number three. You're going to read Matthew 5, 10 through 12. Your question for number three, in what way did Jesus describe those who are persecuted for their faith in him? And what did he say they would receive? Matthew 5, 10 through 12. The next one, number four, is in 1 Peter 4, 12 through 14. Your question is, why did Peter write that we ought to rejoice in persecution? Why would he say that? Why did he write we ought to rejoice when we're in persecution? 1 Peter 4, 12 through 14. The next one is number five, and that's 1 Peter 4, 15. What is a reason some people may suffer that is not persecution? What's a reason some people might suffer that's not persecution? 1 Peter 4.15 Okay, up here to the right, number 6. Wait a minute. I didn't put number six. Number seven. We're gonna okay, we're gonna do number six right over here. Let me change this a minute, y'all. Let me change this a minute. This is number seven over here. Number six is right here. And for number six, you're gonna do Mark 4, 16 through 17. Mark 4, 
16 through 17. Number six is Mark 4, 16 through 17. And my question is, what do some people do when they are persecuted? What do some people do when they are persecuted? Now, up here to the top right, number seven. Here we go. Put down Matthew 5, verse 44. Matthew chapter 10, verses 16 through 19 and verse 22. Romans chapter 5, 3 through 4. Romans 12, 14. 2 Corinthians 12, 10. 2 Thessalonians 1, 4. 1 Peter 4.19 and Hebrews 12.11. The question is, in what ways should we respond to persecution? And you're going to list, and every single scripture has a way that you can list. In what ways should we respond to persecution? And I'm going to go ahead and erase this right here because this is about persecution. But there's a couple more, if I can find my cleaning rack, that I want to give you. So go ahead and copy those scriptures down as I give you the next couple. One, I got at least two more I want you to have. Okay, and it's very important because we're in a time right now when persecution is uh, on the horizon. There's no doubt about it. The devil wants to persecute us. He wants to destroy us and kill us. And, well, so you're going to do Luke. First, then for number eight, what I want you to do, I'm not going to write all this down first. And listen to me. For number eight, I want you to read. Read. Luke. 22, 41 through 53. Luke 22, 41 through 53. Read it. Now, I want you to look at Luke 22, verses 42 and 53. Luke 22, 42 and 53. The question is, why was Jesus persecuted to the point of crucifixion? Um, the next one is number nine. That's Matthew ten seventeen through eighteen. Matthew 10, 17 through 18, and Acts 8, 3 through 7. For number nine. Question is, what positive outcomes does persecution sometimes result in? What positive outcomes does persecution sometimes result in? Matthew 10, 17 through 18, Acts 8, 3 through 7. All right, that's it. So there's nine things I'm going to give you. Um, go ahead and bring that to the barn Friday night. And we we're going we're to finish this up probably Friday night and into Sunday. Okay? Um, in the barn. That's our, that's our Google Meet room, you guys. So go ahead and start working on this. You, today is uh, Monday. You have all, actually it's Sunday. Sunday evening. You have all week long, y'all. You can take, you know, one one number a day. You can do number one. If you're real busy with work, you can do number one. You can spend a couple nights on that if you have to. Uh, Tuesday, you know, Wednesday. Th you can get it done. You can get it done. And then this is to encourage you, y'all, to find time. Make that special time with the Lord. 
Coming to the barn is commanded as great as good, but you also need some alone time with God. And we've been urging you to do that ever since you guys have been here with us. All right. So go ahead, y'all. You seek the Lord, you'll find. Go dig in that word. It's exciting. It's gold, man. It, it is nothing like it. When you start getting answers, you start hearing God. It's, it's incredible. Okay. Um, again, thank those of you that still giving your uh, your um, Pentecost offerings that God has commanded us to give. Thank those of you. And everything else y'all are doing, thank you guys. It's in the description below on the video. Go ahead and do it that way. And next weekend, um, I'm going to blow the shofar and prayer cloth over what you guys have sent. Those of you, that's the Pentecost offerings. I'm only doing it for the Pentecost offerings. Okay, and that's your first fruits. All right, everybody else, you know, you just keep on following Jesus anyway. But the Pentecost offerings is something different than regular tithes and offerings. And I'm going to blow the show far over you guys. Okay? And I'm uh, keeping up with that. So God bless you guys. Make Jesus Christ Lord of your life. And don't forget, we come on live at 2 o'clock and 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we'll see you tonight. And we'll see you tomorrow. Okay? God bless you. Make Jesus Lord of your life.